This is Alma the Santa. Eric Newman. Eric Hansen. This is Ernesto Perez Carrillo. Hi, this is Glenn Case. Nick Perdomo. Nicholas Perdomo Jr. This is Jerry from Ben and Jerry's. This is Jim Young from Davidoff of Geneva. This <laughs> is the Cigar Authority. <laughs> the authority. Are you saying pal? On everything cigar. <laughs> In. I get it. And out of the cigar industry. I know what it entails. And I'm ready to nail it. With your host. You know, you're, you're funny. David Garofalo. How funny how? Like I'm a clown? I amuse you? What the f*** is so funny about me? Tell me. Mr. Jonathan. Damn it. Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? For the last time, anything you put on that prompter, Burgundy will read. Very stunned. The sportos, motorheads, geeks, bloods, wasteoids. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. And Chuck Morrison. I am 35 years old, and I live in a van down by the river. It's time to light them up. <laughs> it's time <laughs> for the Cigar Authority. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. August 8th, 2015, broadcasting live from the LaFleur Dominicana Cigar Studios. And we are going to light up a brand new La Flor Dominicana cigar today called Lenox. And another cigar from the Cigar Authority's care package, a real boutique cigar called Sea Night. And speaking of boutiques, what exactly is a boutique cigar? We'll talk about that and see if we can finally come up with a real definition. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. You are listening to the Cigar Authority, the only radio show in the U.S. and, yes, the world that is always broadcast on location, and we are the only show that doesn't just allow smoking. We insist, we demand that you light up along with us. You can catch the podcast on demand at any time simply by going to thecigarauthority.com where you can set it and forget it with either iTunes or YouTube. Okay, we're going to smoke a the second cigar, actually, from the care package. If you bought the Cigar Authority care package, you can look inside and uh, last week we did a topper cigar when we were based uh, out of Connecticut in the Connecticut River Valley. This one is a boutique cigar called Sea Night, and boutique meaning it's coming from somebody's cigar store. A real true boutique when I mention that. We're going to get deep into that during the show, but this is a cigar um, that I had tried uh, a few weeks ago, yeah. and I said, wow, this is really good. Not a cigar that we carry in our own retail establishment, but something that's uh, carried in somebody else's retail establishment, a true boutique, and a very interesting story to, to this cigar, uh, the Sea Knight. Um, and uh, right now, is, is he all set? He's all set. He's all set. Via Google, we're going to bring on the cigar that was named after this person. Uh, he's a boutique. He's a retailer out of Maryland, Steve Castro. He owns 11 Davida stores down there. Uh, one of the cigars that we do carry is Lord Baltimore. While he was up here, he uh, handed me one of these cigars to try, and I actually liked it more than the cigar we carry ourselves in oh. Baltimore, uh, Sea Night, and the interesting story that it uh, has to it. So, uh, Steve, are you there? Uh, he's there. Uh, Steve, it looks like your mic is muted. Can you just check your settings for your microphone? You How's go. that? Can you hear me now? There Here we go. go. Hi, Steve. Hey, guys. How you doing? Very good. Very good. So Thanks we're about for to having me on. Appreciate it. Oh, beautiful. We're about to cut and uh, light our cigar. Uh, right now, it's the official time to cut our cigar. It's brought to you by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other cigar brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. And Steve, that is where I first met you. I actually met you at the Perdomo factory in Nicaragua. We were uh, both touring the Perdomo uh, um, uh, El Monstro factory many years ago. Correct. Yeah, it was a good time. It was, it was a lot of fun. Was. And um, this, this is a, uh, a cigar that you made actually for your store, the, the Sea Night, right? That's correct. Uh, I was approached by George Sosa, who's the, uh, as you know, the vice president of sales for Alec Bradley. Yep. And he said, hey, we need to do a cigar celebrating your military career. George Sosa like, George. Used to work for Perdomo too. What's that? Is the connection? George Sosa worked for Perdomo also. That's correct. Yeah, he did. He worked for Nick. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, you know, George is a former command master chief. He's really into the military. I mean, he really rose up high in the military, uh, in the Navy. And um, he said, "Hey, we need a cigar that's going to celebrate your military career." And I'm like, "George, nobody cares about military careers. This is silly." 
And he's like, what hell, What did you fly in the military? I said, I flew the CH-46 Sea Knight. And it's a great helicopter. There's a lot of fun to fly. I don't know if you can see the picture in, in back of me, but that's me in uh, Desert Shield and Desert Storm uh, during the uh, Gulf War back then. And uh, it's an old helicopter. It was a helicopter that flew in Vietnam. A lot of the helicopters we had in our squadron still had the uh, patched bullet holes underneath the floorboards that you could see. Wow. They finally decommissioned the helicopter back and now they've replaced them all with the uh, the Osprey, the tilt rotor aircraft. But we thought it'd be a cool idea to uh, come up with a cigar to actually celebrate the sea night and uh, also the time when I was in the military. All right, so and so we came up with this uh, cigar called the sea night. Thank you for your service. Uh, and one, one thing that always confused me is, so you were the Navy, yet you flew airplanes. I was. I went to the Naval Academy, but ten percent of the class from the Naval Academy can go into the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps is a branch of the uh, Navy, and okay. the Marine Corps has a substantial amount of helicopters. So I flew flew helicopters. All right. So what is the, uh, the significance of the 1988 on the band, Steve? The 1988 was when I got my wings. That was when I finished flight wow. school. So this nice. one really hits home, man. This is your cigar here. You fly anything other than that uh, that sea night? Uh, yeah, I flew the T thirty four. I was a uh, fixed wing flight instructor. That's the first aircraft all um, Navy and Marine Corps pilots fly uh, to learn how to fly. It's a, a fixed wing prop aircraft, and I flew that for for a number of years as an instructor. Is it like a trick plane? Can you do barrel rolls and stuff in it? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I was a precision aerobatics <laughs> instructor for a while. I could do barrel rolls, loops, spins, all sorts of cool stuff. So I'm a tasting a pre light drawer on here. It, there's um some sort of maybe bourbon. It's like a spicy cognac, something something happened. There's a here. raisin. There's a raisin characteristic in there. As well. <laughs> For me, the foot reminded me of chocolate covered cherries. Really, got some barrel aging going in here with this cigar. Do you think? Um, I don't think so. No, it's not a barrel aged cigar. It's uh, the wrappers from uh, Jalapa, uh, Nicaragua. It does have a Panamanian binder. The binders oh, from wow. Panama. And the fillers from Honduras, Nicaragua, and both Jalapa and Esteli type of filler. Nice. So yeah. That's fairly complex. Nice, uh, nice cigar. We wanted something more medium to full with. Uh, it's very smooth. You know, didn't want anything bitey, uh, but very, very smooth. Has and brings out a lot of different flavors. Well, we're gonna light our sea night today with the Lotus T4, one of the most badass lighters in the Lotus portfolio. You want to talk about a big ass tank? This yeah. is this, a big ass tank. This is a tweener, man. This is a table lighter. It's too big for a. It really lighter. is too big for uh, your pocket. But you know what? You can. This you is can a get pocket away with... lighter for a big guy like myself. There we go. I pull out those little tiny lighters. I'm being yeah, so big. Yeah. I look like a dink. Yeah. yeah. Inside, uh, back to the dink, huh? Yeah. Back to the dink. You're serving it up for me. <laughs> um, inside, up. all teed up. There was plenty of lines there. We inside your jacket, uh, newer jackets, and I, by newer I mean after 1992 when the cell phones came out. Uh, you got a little lighter pocket for your T4. You could drop it right in there. It's forty nine ninety nine. It's a steal. It is. It, lo it looks a hundred dollars easy. Quad jet. Uh, another great feature on this is the fill hole in the bottom has a little plug, okay, so you, you don't have you don't have uh, lint or dust or ash building up in the bottom, clogging up your lighter. Hmm. Lotus T4. Okay, so we get some body on this. Medium plus. What do you think, Steve? Correct. That's exactly what we wanted. Yeah. We didn't want anything that was, you know, overpowering. You know, it can kill somebody, but we wanted something that, something that had flavor that everyone could smoke. Um, you know, even the uh, guys who are just starting out, you know, would still like it if they want something with a lot of flavor to it. But So we're smoking the Toro size here. What's the retail on this? The retail on the Toro is uh, six sixty nine. Oh. Well. Good what price, a deal. Good price point. Really good value. Really good. Yep. We also have a Corona size, a Churchill, and a Gordo. So there's four different sizes, uh, ranging from five ninety nine up to uh, seven forty nine. How long did it take you to come up with a C night? How many blends did you go through before you said this is it? It it took a good solid year. Um, we go we're going back and forth because you know we thought you know it's a you know, representing the military, we wanted to. We didn't want it to be a mild cigar. We wanted it to be a bolder cigar, but we didn't want it to be crazy. So it took a lot. Now we get a little drop going yeah. on there. Did we lose him? No, he's still there. It looks like his internet connection might be a little choppy. 
He's yeah, it's a little choppy. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Jump off. Yeah, we got it. Um, uh, we were. Would we leave off here? A year. Yeah, a year of a year of uh, of blending. Yeah. And then the Corona forth. size. He he went on to. There's a Corona available. Yeah, what there's a Corona. Can corona. you hear me now? There's a, there's a Corona, a Churchill, and a uh, Super Gordo. So probably a six sixty. Yep. Nice. What's the what's the Greyhawk all about on the uh, on the band? The Greyhawk was the uh, name of the squadron. I was in HMM one sixty one, uh, stationed out in uh, Tustin, California, and uh, the Greyhawks were the name of our squadron. Now, do you ever keep up with with the people that you were with in those days? You know, I think we've all pretty much gone our separate ways. Uh, there's a few people I still keep in touch with. Uh, a good friend of mine is a good friend of mine fly for United Airlines right now, but uh, for the most part, yeah, we've pretty much separated. Yeah, too bad you couldn't find them and send them all a box of the cigars because this is uh, part of your life. I, I mean, this is a big deal here. And yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. Well, get, Do you ever, get, you ever get, take get. any any fire while you were over there? No, we we mainly did. Um, Troop transport and all missions. We flew uh, a lot of medevac missions, and um, yeah, we did some special forces type insertions and some uh, rescue missions. So, whereas uh, we don't carry it at, at Two Guys Cigars, um, is is there uh, other retailers that are carrying, or is this pretty much your your brand right now? It's right now. It's our brand. It's a fairly new cigar, and um, we're looking if other retailers would like to carry it. We'll be more than happy to uh, send it to them at a uh, great wholesale price. We do have it uh, on uh, our website at uh, Dominant Cigars, but we would love to get it out to other retailers because we think it's a really, really good cigar. And it really is carry it. delicious. Yeah, it really yeah. is. When, when uh, you came up, you you offered one of these to me uh, that morning, and I smoked it. And I'm, I was I was wowed by it. And I said, "Wow, uh, we got to do this on the show." And uh, you were kind enough to uh, get us some cigars for the care package, which we sent out. So, uh, watching the show is uh, a little over a hundred people that actually have the cigar in their hand right now as we're talking along uh, and smoking it. So, if you end up liking it right now, DavidusCigars.com is the place to go if you want to buy uh buy it after you're trying it um uh very very nice and and uh priced very well in the six dollar range of uh for this toro that's pretty amazing yep now steve you're you're a buyer yourself for davidus so as a buyer when you're looking to bring in a new brand as as maybe some retailers that are listening are looking to do do you find as a buyer that you look more at the story behind the brand are you looking at who makes it or are you more concerned with what it tastes like? I'm very concerned with what it tastes like, and I'm very concerned about the story behind the brand. If something is unique, something dif is different, and you can tell the story to sell it, that's important. But it's also ha it also has to taste very good. You know, it has to be a good good tasting cigar. Yeah, so the and taste has to be able to back up that story. Because I, I'll admit, you know, you're down on the floor, and someone comes in and says, "What's new?" And you say, "Well, this is Brand X right here." Well, tell me a little bit about it. I got nothing. Yeah, I'm not going to try that. But if it's a unique, yeah, yeah. if it's a unique, so cigar, many choices, There's so like, many choices, like C Night here, where you could say, you know what, this is a retailer out of Maryland. Uh, he flew choppers. He's like the most badass dude, and you'd never know it to look at him. He's very unassuming, <laughs> but he would kill you yes. just as soon as look at you. You're right. Absolutely. Well, I got to try it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. You have to look at the story, and you also have to look at the taste of the cigar. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's very important. Getting a little bit of espresso with a little hint of licorice, almost like a, a touch of Sambuca was added to it. Barista. I'll be the judge of that. There's a little zip like Zambuca, you know, the little sting that's happening because there's a little spice sting that's happening here. You know you're smoking a cigar here. This is no joke. Yeah, you can feel right. it. The strength of that Lajero yeah. the nose. It's just not hitting me in the chest. It's right. not hurting. It's a, it's a Saturday morning here for us, and it's not bad at all. Uh, but it's a, it's a cigar. I mean, it's a man's man cigar. And you know what impresses me, guys, is like, you know, sometimes you see these, that we'll call them specialty cigars, you know, limited release or whatever. And not to use the word gimmicky, but I can't think of a better one, so we'll say gimmicky. I sometimes question the, the, um, the quality, if you will, of, of a cigar. And with this one, like you said, Dave, this is friggin' awesome. Yeah. Like, this is a really flavorful cigar. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. so much going on here. Great job. You got to be happy with this. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. We're, we're very, very happy. 
It's working so out really well. Turning this bad boy into a Connecticut shade so I could smoke it every day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think that Jalapa Valley uh, Nicaraguan wrapper is very nice on that cigar. Yeah. There's a taste to this, man. Yeah, it's got the sweetness. I'm picking up a little bit of that that anisette quality that you're talking about, Barry. Got a little stinging on the uh, yeah. tongue and lips, right? There's anisette, like and then it's it's playing off of. Sometimes when you drink espresso, the espresso, depending on how long it's been roasted, will take on a sweeter characteristic in and of itself. And sometimes you can pick up a little bit of that anisette. A in espresso. dark cappuccino with yeah. a little splash of uh, in a set in it, very Italian. All right, totally nothing to do with the cigar, but sometimes when you order espresso, they'll give you in a sniff the glass a little bit of the sambuca. Yeah, and there'll be three little black dots, like little things that they put in there that float. What are those? Those are coffee beans. Coffee beans. Oh, they didn't look like coffee beans. Yeah, awesome. They're sambuca soaked coffee beans. You yeah. can eat them and get a little buzz. You can, eat, you can eat them after after you drink. Really? Drink it. Yeah, you eat them. Wow. Because they end up getting soaked up. But yeah, coffee beans. You learn something new every day on the cigar. There though. we go. Yeah. Barry, what do you have for uh, uh, last week's uh, Duran cigar question? Well, last week we asked the question. Well, first of all, let me do the whole spiel. Okay. It's time for the question of the week brought to you by Duran Cigars. When the question is asked, what are you smoking? The answer should be Duran. Duran Cigars combines the best quality tobacco fills from Nicaragua and Latin America with their super premium Habano Criollo Colorado wrapper. Experience the difference, Duran Cigars. I can't believe every week that we've been doing this, I've been able to say Habano Criollo Colorado wrapper <laughs> without tripping over it. Here we go. Last week, we asked you who has a brighter future for their upcoming release, Steve Saka's Sober Mesa or Nick Melillo's El Wawense. All right. Before you give the answer, we have Steve Castro on here. Steve, did you purchase both of those as a retailer? I I did purchase the C Steve Saka cigar. I did not purchase the other one. Oh, I didn't okay. see it. I didn't see it there. Didn't even see it. So, okay. No. So, so what do you got for an answer? Here? Well, with over 900 votes cast, 78% of you think Saka's cigar will do better. So you picked the right one according to uh, the people that are out there uh, mm -hmm. paying attention. Um, you know, believe it or not, all these years, I've never even met uh, Nick. Yeah, I haven't met Nick either. Yeah. Um, been talking to him about maybe getting him on the show. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. I know he's in Nicaragua right now. So. Yeah. Steve, uh, you have, you right? You took that factory tour? Uh, no, I have not taken that one. Wait, wait, which factory tour are we talking about? The, uh... Drew Estates. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've taken Drew Estates. That was a great factory tour. I highly recommend it. Yeah, and you didn't meet Nick while you were there, who was running the factory, I imagine? Um, yeah, we did meet him briefly. It uh, was just a quick, quick hello. Mm. But, um, All right. yeah, it was, it was a great tour. It's They give you a, a chance to blend your own uh, cigar, which was really, really a good experience, teaching you about the different types of tobaccos. It was great for my employees. It was great for some of our top customers also. Yeah, Nick's a really, interesting guy. really nice setup. I'd like to meet, and I think you'd like to meet him too, because he was a retailer himself out of Connecticut, and then he ended up running a factory for Drew Estates, and then now he ends up forming his own cigar company, uh, made somewhere else, not running the factory at all, but now he's a brand owner. Uh, he can't seem to have gone completely in the wrong. Yeah, uh, very odd. You know, the, the, everybody else does it in a different order, and uh, he's gone in this order, and uh, we did take it on. I've never even met the man, uh, but um, we took it on. He seems like a bright, bright guy of what I've heard about him, and I hear nice things, but um, uh, Steve, we all know very, very well, and, and that's um, – the only reason why I believe Steve really got himself out there and everybody got to know him. So I, I think that's the reason behind it. What do you got, Jonathan? Uh, Steve Castro, I'm wondering, um, we, we're starting to see some of the cigars trickle in from the trade show. Any standouts for you in the shop, if you don't mind me geeking out as a retailer for a minute? <laughs> the uh, new one from Davidoff, the uh, Brasilia one, yeah. that uh, that seems to be taken off very well. The... Uh, I don't know how it's doing for you guys, but uh, that, that's really that's taking well. Very good. It's doing well. Very good. So, yeah. Barry, what do you got for your question? This so this week? week we asked a question with uh, Kilo finally arriving in the stores. Who of the three of us would you like to do the official review? Will it be David Garofalo? Will it be Mr. Jonathan? Or will it be me? 
Or if you want to write in Chuck Morris and feel free to. Although or, I've never or, written or, a cigar or, review, or, but or we, you know what? I'm going to go on and I'm going to add Chuck to the to the thing. Well, that's a guarantee. Don't vote for Chuck. That's a guarantee that Chuck finally blows chunks at the end of smoking a cigar because that is so very strong. Barry, since you put years into the cigar, right? Um, is it a guarantee from you that you'd rate it 100 because it's absolutely no, exactly what you wanted? No, because I'm a realist. I try to rate the cigar to what I believe the the, the market would be. I, I see some imperfections in Kilo. I don't think Kilo is a 100-rated cigar. Okay. Um, I think it fits a specific niche in the, niche in the marketplace. But, but does it fit your specific niche? It fits what I look for in a strong cigar. It's a strong cigar. Oh my goodness. Did you smoke it, Steve? Oh yeah, I smoked it. You gave me you gave me a couple to try. It's crazy strong. It's, it's crazy strong. I'd agree how, with that. How, you know, we're smoking the C night right now, which is a medium plus cigar. Somebody uh that that is a real mild guy may look at it as, as a full bodied cigar and stuff, but kilo is in a different level. It should come actually with a warning label of smoke <laughs> it. It's too full bodied. You know, you like full bodied, okay, but it's it's not that in between. Is it well? Really? And going back to you know the story behind the cigar with Barry Stein being a fuller bodied cigar smoker and ha putting years into it. There's the story. But he smokes everything. He does smoke Obviously, everything. But then everything. when I say to a customer, listen, this is strong. I'm just telling you right now, you may not smoke a stronger cigar than this. This is it. This is as strong as you're going to get. All right, I'll take a handful. So with what we just said, I think actually, Barry, because you said, no, it's not 100 rated, and I look at it, I would be very interested in hearing your review on a cigar that you put together yourself. And honest as you, as you possibly can be, like every mm -hmm. rating that you do, as honest as you can possibly be. Now, I know there's this probably listeners that say, oh, he gave his own cigar a great review. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But me personally, I want to see what it would be. They, because I look at a review as a guide. It is not the yeah. be-all right. and end-all of any, anything. It is this person's reviewing it. And I'd love to see your honest review of a cigar that you put that much time into. Okay. I mean, Five I don't have a problem with that. I consider myself a used car salesman. That's the way I look at a cigar review <laughs> and all cigar reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some bloggers have gotten too full of themselves. And then as a result, they've gone by the wayside. But you have to be able to separate what your personal preference is when reviewing Absolutely. a cigar. Absolutely. Is it a good cigar or not a good cigar? Exactly. Um, you know, and um, who is it? Uh, the the um, Cigar Geek guys that say, would I buy five? Would I buy a box? Right. Very interesting. Very. This where the real voting counts of yep. when you buy it. I when always say wallet. that. Vote with your wallet. Um, uh, how we end up doing our um, Cigar of the Year thing is – there's all kinds of little things that go on to it, but voting with your wallet is actually the strongest piece of what it is. Mm -hmm. Because t take away the fanboy thing of it. I like that guy's brand or I like whatever it is. Oh, are you buying them? That's the key. Now, are you spending your money on it? And we don't even tell you. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you end up getting this, this gets a vote. No, we don't say anything. And then the, the truth of the matter comes out. So I have a quick question for Steve Yeah, uh, along the same lines here. So Barry, you know, Kilo being your, your brand, uh, more or less modeled after what you like in a cigar being, you know, fuller, stronger cigars. Mm -hmm. My question for Steve is, you know, with, um, with C night here, is your profile, you know, that upper medium class? Uh, personally, my profile is uh, a little, little lighter than that. I uh, tend to go for more of the cigars that Dave likes. It's funny because when we talk, we, uh, we always say, Oh wow, I really like that cigar. And I would say mine is more of a um, mild to, to medium profile but the c9 is one that i do smoke uh, because it does have such great complex flavors and uh, I, I like the taste of it but uh, for the most part i most of the cigars i smoke are more on the medium or mild to medium range and what i'm enjoying about this is i i lean myself toward the mild to medium range and i would consider this to be f right there i mean uh, right on the line of full bodied but nothing aggressive about it flavor wise it's a, it's hitting my palate a little soft uh, and then there's some subtlety going on there that I typically would not pick up in a strong cigar. You end up just getting hit with those stronger tobaccos right off the bat. So there's some well-aged stuff going on in here, Steve. There we go. And I think that's key to make sure the tobacco is well-aged. And uh, even if you are putting a lot of Lajero in a particular cigar, as long as it's well-aged Lajero, it's still going to be smooth. It's still going to have flavor to it. And it's still going to have that body that you want. 
pe people confuse the harshness of young tobacco as full bodiness, and you can have a exactly. mild cigar that is that is harsh because it's it's not aged properly, sure, right. and it ends up oh this is full body. No, it's underage. It's you know they they, they don't realize what it is. So Barry, I, is this a question that you're asking this week of um, all our viewers going to determine um, who is going to take the um, do the review? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'll do one maybe down the road one day. Okay. But I think unless the of course you win. Yeah. Unless of course you win. In. Unless of course I win. Yeah. And I'm going to watch to make sure that we don't get flooded with votes from the Tampa Bay area like we did on the last poll that involved Mr. Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> Am I not popular in the Tampa Bay area? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't know he wasn't that popular yes. in the Tampa Bay area. <laughs> Remember we had the whole flooding of votes thing going on? Oh, is this from maybe his, your sister that lives there? And, <laughs> oh, and, 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 and the whole control, call center? I can't control, control my center? sister's actions. Yes, I didn't when, you call her her up and, when you call her up and ask her to do no, it, that she be... saw it on <laughs> Facebook and she did that on her own because she's a good sister. There we go. All right, so that's it for the Duran question. Yep, the question of the week was brought to you by Duran Cigars. And when the question is asked, what are you smoking? The answer should be Duran Cigars. Experience the difference. All right, Steve Castro, thank you for joining us, and thank you for these cigars. I think, I think they're fantastic. If uh, uh, you are one that uh, received a care package and you're interested in buying more of these, you go to DavidaCigars.com, and they can hook you up over there. If you're a retailer, and you're looking to carry this brand in your store, what do they do there, Steve? They can email me directly. They can email me from the website, or they can email me at steve, steve at davidus.com, and I will send them the wholesale price list, and we can move forward from there. there we go. Steve at davidus.com. This, this is a truly boutique cigar. We're going to get into that, but thank you, uh, Steve, for joining us. Right now, we're going to take a break. And uh, is the cigar we are smoking, the Sea Knight, a true boutique cigar? I think it is. But some people are confused exactly what a boutique cigar really is. What is the criteria? We'll discuss that and analyze that in the new La Flor Dominicana cigar. It looks very different. We'll fire that up, too. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Radio Network. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number no. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm -hmm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the Diamond Crown. Wow. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. When you light a Davidoff cigar, you set aglow the richest tradition of cigar making in the world. You release craftsmanship achieved by our investment in that most precious of commodities, time. The time it takes to create a Davidoff cigar as it passes through 600 hands before it arrives in yours. The time it takes to age and mature the tobacco which fills a Davidoff cigar, sometimes as much as 10 years. The time it takes to hand pick, hand roll, and then carefully hand check each individual cigar before it is fit to wear the legendary Davidoff white band. In every second of enjoyment, there are decades of experience. In every way, it is time beautifully filled. Mr. Punch is back with a new cigar that keeps it true to his name. Introducing Punch Signature, a flavorful, fuller-bodied cigar from Punch featuring a specially cultivated Ecuadorian Corojo wrapper and rich Nicaraguan fillers. The wrapper brings the deep history of Ecuadorian tobacco and Punch into the present with this new exciting leaf. You're not going to see that wrapper anywhere else in the market, so you owe it to yourself 
to grab one today. The new punch signature, true to its name. Cigar smokers, how about if we go over a few cigar store sounds? Can you guess what this is? Oh, yeah. You think you got it? Okay, do you know what this is? Now for the cigar. What do you think of this cigar? So, I'm lighting up a La Giana Havana cigar. The La Giana Havana natural cigars are, oh yeah, so smooth. And oh yeah, the Maduro version is a bit beefed up. But oh yeah, they're delicious too. When asked what my favorite cigar is, I always say it's La Giana Havana. Oh yeah. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage, may we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donuts. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Jose Hi, this is Nestor Miranda from Miami Cigar, and you are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Radio Network. And we are back live in the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Studios. You're listening to the Cigar Authority, a weekly broadcast now over five years running about cigars and the nonsense surrounding them. One nonsense thing that happens in the cigar business is the word boutique being thrown around um, like crazy, uh, to help a product sell. Uh, it is in a, in a marketing way is why they do it. Does boutique mean that the cigar is better? And while we're at it, what the hell does boutique even mean? Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. That's what we're going to talk about. We are smoking a boutique, what I believe is a really boutique cigar, which is the Sea Knight, made for Davos in Maryland, which is a retail store, 11 locations, and actually right now, the only place where you can get it, and now they're looking for other retailers to carry this boutique cigar. So let's get into it. What exactly is a boutique cigar? And this is an editorial that I wrote for the Cigar Authority. If you want to read along or if you want to read it in its entirety, you can go to the thecigarauthority.com and scroll down there, and you'll see uh, this went up, I believe, on Monday. Um, I got a lot of emails and calls from the previous week's email where I wrote the end of the boutique boom. I believe that this was the end of the boutique boom. So I thought we would clarify a bit because of all these emails I got. Uh, there was plenty of confusion on exactly what a boutique cigar is, and we kind of got into it a little bit with some of our listeners. And uh, so let's dig in now. The boutique uh, pronounced boutique is a noun, and according to the dictionary, it means a small store selling fashionable clothes and accessories, a business that serves sophisticated sophisticated clientele. The word is French for shop, and it is out, um, ultimate, ultimately from the Greek meaning storehouse. 
So with that information, a boutique cigar may be a cigar shop's brand, like the C-Night we have here. If that is true, that should include Ashton, as it is a boutique to Holt Cigar in Philadelphia. That's who owns that brand, Holt's Cigar Store in Philadelphia. Although they sell millions of cigars, they are made for Fuente, by, by Fuente, Fuente yep. and um, that cigar was originally made just for that store, and then stores took it on, and it and continues. That was since 1985. Also, the brand Elision um, was considered a boutique cigar for Fumare, uh, which is in Reno, Nevada. It's made by Casa Fernandez, and that's Dion Giolito's cigar brand. And now, is that a boutique cigar? It certainly started off as a cigar store shop brand. Well, uh, would the argument be that once something becomes a household name like Illusion or Ashton, that it ceases to become a boutique? Now it's not a boutique any longer. Maybe. Look at Davidoff. Davidoff started Davidoff. off as a store brand. Right. Would you call that a boutique cigar? It certainly started that way. The term boutique can also be referred to to a specialty term in other industries, such as boutique investment banking and boutique law, law firm. The word is often used to describe property of independent sectors of hotel chains that distinguish themselves from the larger chains, such as Hilton Hotels. In this case, the establishment tries to convey the idea that the operation is small, elite, and highly specialized. That's where this, it is in the cigar industry, I believe, where this term is taken from and where it is used. Small companies making a small amount of cigars different from these mass-produced cigars. Well, being able to perhaps pay closer attention to the production. Yes, to give the illusion That's of that. the illusion is. of that. The re, would the reality be that if you're not making all that many cigars, maybe you're just not that good at making cigars? You don't have the practice. Well, there could or be you that. don't have the means to buy enough tobacco to mass produce them. There we go. So as I wrote this to try to clarify this, I myself got even more confused <laughs> myself. And I got a little emails, and we'll get into some of those as we go on, too. The term boutique applies to mass market items, including cigars, that are either niche or have been produced intentionally in small amounts to be sold at some higher prices. If it's a boutique, you can get more money for it, maybe, okay. because it is that limited. Uh, it is not mass-produced, so it can be charged more. Uh, this can be referred to as boutique manufacturing, even when made by one of the bigger manufacturers. So you got something like Tatuaje. Would that be boutique because his stuff gets made in smaller amounts at a much larger factory? Well, when, when that cigar started, it was a teeny little room, basically. Tatuaje was made in Miami. Caliacho in a little, little factory, um, the Pepin Garcia factory, small, small little thing, I think nine rollers, and that began Tatuaje. Then, with Did success, they sell the cigars right there from that little shop? They bought them, sold them there, but the, also they were sold to um, Pete Johnson, California, who distributed them to retail stores, including the cigar bar that he worked at at the time. So... It grew. Now, does that mean it is not boutique anymore? Because now, now the factory goes from nine people to 900 people. Right. And now it's in hundreds of thousands of stores, maybe. Wow, you got me confused. I don't think he qualifies as boutique, but I think his brother's company now is the boutique guy. Made in the same place. Made mm -hmm. in the same place, but so be small <laughs> store. Not yeah, stores. It's not successful yet. So is boutique <laughs> mean not successful? Uh, the boutique clarification is normally given to a smaller type of cigar manufacturing as opposed to the big factories like General, Altadas, Fuente. But one question is, what is the cutoff and how big can a manufacturer make a boutique brand uh, from an owner? Again, getting confused again. How big can the factory be that can still make boutique cigars? Yeah, well, I, I would imagine there has to be a number on this. Maybe we can apply one. Some claims a boutique cigar is one that a manufacturer's in quantity is less than a million cigars. Less than a million. About 300 million cigars are sold in the U.S. or imported to the U.S. each year and sold through retail establishments. 300 so, million. Therefore, a cigar that produces entire, the entire line of it, every size, less than a million. Could that be a boutique cigar? Or could that be just a non-successful cigar? Well, if, I, I would argue that if you're selling uh, 
uh, just shy of a million sticks that you're doing okay. You're doing okay. Are you I, would, I would say that you're doing more than okay, and you're putting your kids through college, and you're having no issues. I don't know if that's a boutique yet. <coughs> Some claim boutique cigars are usually limited in quantity but must be made in smaller factories. Therefore, you couldn't make a boutique at General Cigars Factory. You couldn't make a, a boutique at... Uh, Tabadon could yeah. make a boutique. Davidoff can't make a boutique. General Cigar can't make a boutique. Altadas can't make a boutique. Fuente can't make a boutique. Perdomo can't make a boutique. Is Is that true? So Perdomo makes Garofalo for me. Is that a boutique cigar? It's made for a guy in a cigar retail shop. Bah, Doesn't bah, 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 bah. say Perdomo anywhere on the box. I'd so I think maybe boutique. it could be. Hmm. You say it could be boutique? I say Garofalo is definitely a boutique. Definitely a boutique. Okay. I'm, I'm still reserving judgment right now, Barry. Okay, there's no doubt about it. It is confusing as there is no definite answer to this, to my knowledge, that no one has ever come up with a final definition, a complete definition to what a boutique cigar really is. My qualification uh, would contain that the total production number be for the entire line, as I say, meaning every size combined. So you can't have one size that's boutique of a line. Okay. Um, Sure, it could be made from a major manufacturer or a small manufacturer, but wouldn't it be automatic if it was a small manufacturer and a small manufacturer making far less than one million cigars of total? Therefore, every single brand that they make would now become a boutique. So would that mean would Skip Martin then be boutique? Yeah, he makes less yeah. than a million, and he would be. But you know what? I hear he's getting really close to that. So maybe yeah, I think knows? Skip Martin is the next generation of boutique guys to step out of the boutique. So the, the terminology, terminology is really bad because success makes you not a boutique cigar. Is there such a thing as a successful boutique cigar that's been a boutique cigar for a long time? How about private label brands like store brands, exclusives? Are they boutique? Uh, should they be considered boutique as they are true boutique if they're made for a store? The boutique is the definition of it. Therefore, everybody's private label brand is a boutique. Right. I will mention one brand that's been around for a long time that's always been and still is boutique. What about Paul Gamarian? Paul Gamarian made a Davidoff. Huge company. But, but I don't small think he's production. ever stepped out of that small production boutique right. terminology. Well, you got crown heads too. You know, they're not making all that many cigars. That all their stuff seems to be limited. Although they just announced on Twitter they got their four hundred or five hundredth retailer on board. So five hundred retailers if they're if they're all buying the majority of the retailers of no one's buying a hundred box they they're buying the average retailer is buying one or two boxes and that's their order. Of not for size. the year. Not for the year. Uh, for the production. So how about uh, very successful boutiques. They get a lot of attention of the retailers who buy into them. These brands sell across the country and in some cases across the globe, like Tatuaje, Elysion, Aging Room, Alec Bradley, Hammer and Sickle, Asylum, Kristoff. No, they not may not be they may not be boutiques anymore because they went over that threshold of more than a million cigars, right? You gotta imagine every one of them is over. So a that's what we're sticking with. It. I don't it's know. Over a million. They were boutiques, but with its success, it takes them out of the category. I, listen, I don't know. I, I know because your whole article is to define what a I boutique know. is. And with the arguments that I was getting as I was writing the article, yeah. all the emails that were coming in was confusing the hell out of me, too. And I'm like, all right, I can't stand by that. <laughs> this uh, is sounding like a Ted Wells investigation. There we go. So does that mean that every unsuccessful brand is automatically a boutique? Until it becomes successful. Again, I'm What's your bench, my, I'm what is your benchmark for success? I'm, I'm saying a million cigars. I'm trying to come well, up you're, with it and you're saying, saying a million mark is a boutique. Right. So, but what's your benchmark for success? You were able to pay your bills as a cigar guy? Is that success? Well, then you go out of business. I don't know. If, if you can't, you go out of business. So, how about 262? AKA Black Label Trading. I'm going to read off some of these things Crown Heads, Espinosa, J. Fuego, Regis, Cro Magnon, 724, Atabe, Byron, BG Myers, Cuba Rica, Debonair, Fleur de Lorraine, Recluse, the Tuga, La Polina, Bandolero. These are all, as far as I'm concerned, under a million per the brand, I think. Okay. And I apologize and say congratulations to the owners of the brands that. 
I just said that actually are above the million million mark. Congratulations uh, if you did, and I guess congratulations that you're not a boutique anymore. Hmm. If that's the case, some of these cigars are made in big factories who make non-boutique cigars, but maybe a big manufacturer can't produce a, a boutique because we're not quite sure of that yet. <laughs> if you can do it, can a big beer company produce a micro brew? A brewery or craft brewery is a brewery that produces a small amount of beer. So a small factory like Roma Craft, who makes Cro-Magnon, must definitely be a boutique, right? I don't know. Hmm. I say yes, but only if they're under the million threshold that we just created or just I just created. It does and, seem a little arbitrary. But. And my guess is that they're getting very close to it, so therefore they would get out their factory would not be a micro factory uh, a boutique factory and their brand would not be a boutique it brand. almost sounds like we're making the argument of exchanging the word boutique for really what people are mistaking for cool so you have yeah. someone like yeah. Pete Johnson who is cool in the cigar he's one of the popular kids yeah. right he's the captain of the football team yeah. in the cigar world so he's cool but he makes too many cigars really to be boutique and people are exchanging yeah. the word cool Very interesting. for boutique. Very interesting. He has you cachet. Agree with that? Yeah, but now I'm curious to this fact. I remember many years ago, Cigar Aficionado listed the most asked for brands in the cigar shop. Yeah. Tatuaje was on that list. Mm. Now that he's become so popular. And a big fa the big factory now is producing right. it. You get all you want. Does he still get as many people asking for it? Is he still one of the cool kids? Or is he he's now, he's gotten too big for us. We don't want to associate with them. But I, as long as he's selling more, well, this is the maybe thing. You're not, you're not asking because there they are. You don't have to right. ask. Let's right take, there. But let's, is the cool factor still as strong as it was, say, five years ago? I, I, I don't know. Let's take the... I'm not a cool guy, so it's very hard for me to say yeah, yeah. what is cool. Uh, uh, let's take um, Liga Pravada as an example, mm -hmm. which in and of itself would, be, would have been considered a boutique line, and maybe at this point they still are. Owned by a huge conglomerate, and Swiss, they Swisher International. So they, imagine they have a boutique. How can that? Well, be that there? brand has suffered dramatically from the sellout because it became worldwide known that they sold out, and now people are saying, "Oh, I'm not smoking Liga anymore because it's owned by Swisher." Tatuaje. You has, think people are saying that? I, is, I hear it. Okay. I'm just saying what I hear on the floor. I'm not. This is not a global discussion. This is me working the floor. Six days a week. So I like the People cigar, but I'm not going to smoke it anymore because of because who owns it's the company. Right. They wow. lost their cool factor. So that's like the cool guy now. He's sitting with the geeks in the lunchroom. He's no longer cool because he's associating with the geeks of the uh, the AV club. What the hell is an AV club? Or the audio visual. visual club. Oh. You guys are both losers because you know that. I'm just letting you know. No denial. <laughs> we didn't have audio video in the 70s myself. So, Well, Dave, going back to your point about Comparing it to micro brews, right? Like, so if Budweiser yeah. produces, say, Longhammer, which is their IPA, and they're distributing that more or less internationally, it can't be a boutique. But if they were just distributing that brand, I'm trying to hone in on the brand aspect, right? And they take that brand and they just distribute it through New England, I would believe that that's now a craft beer. Even though it's produced by Anheuser Busch, it's only distributed. In a, in a very small area. See, now so, that, that statement feeds into what Joe Gutt was saying in the chat room. Does that make Monster a boutique within Tatuaje? Ah, yes. And I'm saying it would, you would have to say all Tatuaje is one brand. Well, that's Is not, it possible to have a boutique within its own same brand? Yeah, but because you, you got <sighs> Tatuaje M80, which by the definition that we have here would fall under boutique. I mean, it's made specifically for a cigar shop. Very limited quantities, certainly not a million. So, so every shop exclusive is now a boutique. Yeah, wouldn't that make sense? All right, your point exactly is coming up here with with the beers and stuff. What are the most successful boutique brands? By simply being a boutique cigar, it is possibly the lack of success. It is not successful, therefore, well, it can't be the most uh, most successful boutique because it is. It is boutique because it is not successful. I disagree because you've got M80 that was extremely successful, complete sellout. For 20 hours. 22. 22 <laughs> hours. Twice. For 22 hours. Let's, let's Twice. change it. Yeah. <laughs> Twice. Anyway, uh, actually, the call of success would not be boutique. You're successful if you're not boutique. Uh, 
as I see it. Um, and um, this is the theory I'm, I'm sticking with anyway. Um, large multinational breweries distort the lines between craft beer and true craft beer in small independent breweries. Big breweries put their names on packaging of their craft beers, for example, Bro uh, Blue Moon, right? Mm. Uh, the perception is that the beer is special while taking the uh, – Trying to hide the, the ties to the big beer yeah, absolutely. company. Right. Um, something backfires when the consumer perceives the move and attempts to pull the wool over the consumer's eyes. So this is what uh, they're thinking is happening. Uh, you're a microbrew guy, and you see this, Chuck. That's why you're bringing it up. Yeah. And you, you, you hate when you see that, right? <laughs> totally. Now you're not going to um, – do you feel slighted, Chuck, if you try you a beer that you believe to be a boutique beer? Yeah. You drink it. You love it. Yeah. Then you find out it's Anheuser Busch. Are you upset about? Yeah, it? Yeah, you're disgusted. You're like, oh, I just, I would just. I just like the Anheuser Busch. I think that that is ridiculous. Yeah. If, if it's a good beer, what difference does it make? Yeah. Well, it's not a craft beer. You can't call it a craft beer, right? If it's produced by Anheuser Busch. But right. going back to the earlier point, if that quote unquote craft beer by Anheuser Busch is only distributed in New England. I'm willing to say that's a craft beer. All right. So some of these micro brew Go back to your audio visual room over there. <laughs> AV room, Mr. Yeah. Jonathan. AV. Okay. Some of these micro looking beer companies hit sales of $100 million. The beer geeks love the independents and think they are buying these from these small guys. And maybe this is the case of the cigar lover. Now, there is a difference uh. here. So you have an uneducated guy that doesn't know the, the, the chain of command when, when it comes to those beers. And he thinks by the packaging that he's drinking a microbrew. And the reality is he is different just like everybody else, right? Yeah. In the right. cigar business, we see it every single day with people coming in that think they're educated on cigars. Oh, brand X is the best cigar ever made. And the reality is that that is one that is mass produced and is nowhere near what it was 30 years ago. So – You've got a lack of perception, education lack, uh, and perception, perception based on packaging. Well, wait, going back to Dave's point, take take Sam Adams, right? Sam Adams, once upon a time, was a craft beer, right? Only and, available. And according to all of their commercials, they still are. No way, because they're international. No. Like, you can yeah. get a Sam I'm Adams saying in Germany. According to their commercials. According false, to their commercials, they still are. <laughs> but do beer drinkers really care who owns the brewery that makes their favorite ale? And you're saying, yes, Chuck, it does. Yeah, man. I think the beer geek, it matters. Definitely. Me, I'm not a beer geek. I don't care as long as it tastes good. Maybe you just want a good, consistent beer. Maybe people want to support small brewers. Yeah. Is that what you want to do? You want to support the small brewer? That's part of it. The large brewer says it is simply nonsense. Consumers care only about how the beer tastes, not about who owns the brewery. You disagree? I disagree. I disagree with that, too. They point out. This is what they're saying anyway. They point out other product categories such as automobiles in which a brand like Audi does make the preference to the fact that it is owned by Volkswagen. Hmm. Doesn't make the reference. Doesn't, they don't yeah. tell you. Yeah, they don't tell you, but that's the fact, right? right? Some people believe boutique cigars are similar to microbrew beers or craft beers. Perdomo even makes a connection very prevalent mm. in their new highly successful Perdomo craft series. Yet Perdomo is not a micro brand. Right. Right. But their brand within the brand See? could be considered micro. All right. So they're both called Perdomo. So now we're getting mm. you can do you can have a micro brand in between your well, regular brand. Yeah, so because the, it, could there be a Mac Macanudo micro? Line well, Nick's, Romeo and Juliet. Nick Sticks, everybody knows, is Nick's cigar. I bet he makes more Nick Sticks than he does. Whether, he, whether he does or not, <laughs> yeah. but does Nick Sticks count as a Perdomo cigar? Yes. Is that under the, the umbrella? Yeah, he's making millions and millions. Whatever. Cigars. Let's say he's, let's say he's making successful. ten. His let's say he's his making names on it. Not ten boxes. Name, his first name. He's making ten boxes a year of Nick Sticks. Let's just say that for the sake of argument. Would the Nick Sticks then be a boutique? Because there's only 10 boxes being made. Very confusing. And how much would you pay for them if there were only 10? This should be the question of the week. There we go. Anheuser-Busch recently said that their sales dropped. A few percent of shares fell. And some feel craft beer may be partially to blame for the fizzling popularity of Budweiser. Now, how do you say this word? Youngling? Yingling. Yingling. Yingling out of PA. 
has now topped Sam Adams as the number one craft beer and shipped almost five million barrels it's of beer. It's not a craft beer. It's definitely <laughs> not a craft beer. <laughs> but they beer. say they oh, are. Jeez, Chuck, you're going to have a coronary. Oh, Isn't Yingling come on. the oldest beer in America? Yingling? Yeah. Could be. It might be. You might be right. I thought it was a Chinese beer. No, you're thinking like no. Soprano or something. Yeah, oh, yeah, all right. Sapporo. Obviously, Sapporo. I don't know my it, beers. It's not micro anything anyway. The fact is that some small beers... Uh, are better than mainstream beers, but some aren't. And the same goes for cigars, is what I say. But cigars have a real problem stemming from new materials. The problem is that these small companies cannot get the raw materials to consistently make a cigar. Which is why they make small runs. Small runs, right. Yeah. The small guy doesn't have the resources to buy the same raw materials consistently to maintain a consistent blend, which is why you see a lot of them producing limited releases all the time. It is a limited amount of raw materials that gets the big guys to buy years and years of supplies to keep their brand consistent. Right. Okay. Well, and let's face it, Budweiser making they're just regular Bud Light, mm -hmm. probably the most difficult beer to keep consistent in the history of beers. In, or, in order to, to have big sales, you would have to have a Bud Light be a Bud Light, no, whether you're opening it here or across or you're going over overseas in England. A Bud Light's got to be a Bud Light. That has to be the most difficult thing. So if it's a skill, why wouldn't people get behind the skill of making Bud Light Bud Light. When it comes down to it, it's simply um, not ready to. I'm not ready to create a boutique definition. If you are, please email <laughs> me because I tried to do it in this, and and it, it got worse. If anything, uh, but congratulations go out to all those non-boutique cigars everywhere because every brand that was once small and became very big and is not boutique anymore is successful. And that's what it's all about. The late, great Fred Zamboni, he was the director of national sales for Atoro Fuente, uh, which was once a boutique cigar brand themselves yeah. way back. Mm -hmm. He once told me there are only two kinds of cigars, those that sell and those that don't. There are three kinds of boutique cigars, those that remain boutique, those that go on and not become not boutique anymore, and those that will fade away. The chance of success right now for boutique cigars, I feel, has been tougher than ever, in my opinion. Because There's so many tobacco out there. is so good right now. Yeah. <clears throat> it's tough. So I don't have an answer to it. That was the idea of it anyway. I don't know if we went anywhere with that <laughs> conversation. But it gets you to think that's the whole idea of the editorials, to get them people engaged. We're going to get to that engagement because we did get lots of email. And I know Jonathan wants to read at least one of them. Yeah, out there. we don't really have time to it, do just it. Really so quickly, it's funny. Go you're talking about Nick Sticks. And somebody logs into the chat room named Nick Cigar. And he says, as a former beer geek before I stopped drinking, no brain owned by Anheuser-Busch, Miller, or Coors was a craft. So, so therefore, none of the big manufacturers could possibly do it in cigars if that's the way it ends up going. I don't have an answer to it, but when we come back, uh, I was on board with the Food Dominicana from the very beginning. As a matter of fact, my account number is three. And that was back into the 90s. Uh, when it was called actually something totally different than that. Today, they make millions of cigars, and maybe they're not boutique anymore. But uh, whatever they do, they have a new cigar coming out that maybe we can consider a boutique. Wait till you see this cigar. Stay tuned. You're going to hear all about it. We're live from the Flor Dominicana Cigar Studios, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Radio Network. And if you happen to be smoking your C night, Brought to you by Steve Castro of Davida Cigars, the most badass man in the cigar world. <laughs> he will kill you just as soon as look at you. Keep the lid end out of your mouth. We'll be back with our number two right here on the United Cigar Radio Network. You know, some football players today remind me of Cuban cigars. They're wicker, they talk too much, and they don't pack the same punch they used to. Take it from Mike Ditka, member of Camacho's Board of the Bold, and check out the new Camacho Corojo line of smokes. Built for the expert palate and fine-tuned for maximum flavor impact, consistency, and quality. In a world where the success of a cigar brand is recognized by its flavor, 
comes two that go head to head. One man smoking two cigars at the same time. Two rappers united in name, but separated by taste. One cigar known as the natural. The natural is no lightweight. It boasts full flavor and taste. The United Cigar Natural. Now comes the Maduro. Darker and even more bolder. With in-your-face flavor. United Cigar. Nothing could prepare you for what awaits you in the box. Both box-pressed. Both 65 million years in the making. Uh, that may be wrong. Well, I'm going with it anyway. Action. Adventure. And bromance. That's right. Bromance. United Cigar. Available in natural or Maduro. Available only at appointed United Cigar retailer shops nationwide. Rated D for delicious. Under 18, not admitted even with a parent. United Cigars. You don't have to choose. Smoke them both. Founded in 1989 by Mariana and Nestor Miranda, Miami Cigar and Company proudly celebrates their 25th anniversary with the release of their flagship brand, the Nestor Miranda Collection. Made in Esteli, Nicaragua by Don Pepin Garcia, the collection is available in three distinct wrappers aimed to please even the toughest critic. Nestor Miranda Collection. You only get one life. How will you live yours? What if La Gloria Cubana stopped at the legendary Siri R? One thing's for sure, they wouldn't have created Siri R as to leave. Discovered on a Nicaraguan mountainside high above the Jalapa Valley floor, this extremely flavorful Nicaraguan puro combines a Jalapa Soul wrapper with a bold combination of Visos and Lajeros. It's a medium to full-bodied cigar that's worthy of your discovery. Learn more at LaGloriaCubana.com slash what if and find yours now at fine tobacconists everywhere. This is Jonathan Carney with the Florida Vancada. I'm J.R. Dominguez. This is John Hart. This is Victor Vitale. Hi, this is Pete Johnson. Steve Saka. Hi, this is Phil Zangi. This is a little bit of shake. Is the Cigar Authority. Man, wait. The authority on everything cigar. Shake it back. Yeah. Get used to hearing it. And out of the cigar industry. Do it. With your hosts. That's a lovely accent you have. David Garofalo. New Jersey. Austria. Austria. <laughs> well, then, good day, mate. Let's put another shrimp on the ball, babe. Mr. Jonathan. Dear Lord, baby Jesus, or as our brothers to the south call you, hey Zeus, we thank you so much for this bountiful harvest of dominoes, KFC, and the always delicious Taco Bell. Barry Stein. That's what I love about these high school girls. I get older, they stay the same age. <laughs> and Chuck Morrison. Is this your place? No, 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 no. No, I live with my mom. Oh. Yeah. You hungry? Hey, Ma! We get some meatloaf! It's time to light them up. There's no smoking in here. It's time. Oh, it's all right, darling. I'm a volunteer fireman. For the Cigar Authority. Hey, shake it back, gal! Woo! Shake it back! Do it. And we're back with our number two broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Studios. And uh, we're going to light up a new La Flor Dominicana. No, this was not in your care package. That's because the cigar isn't out yet, and we were only lucky enough to get four of them. This will be the first time I'm lighting up. It's a cigar called the Knox, and we're going to tell you all about it. But welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. You are listening to the Cigar Authority, the only radio show in the U.S. and, yes, the world that is always broadcast on location. And we are the only show that doesn't just allow smoking, folks. We insist, we demand that you light up along with us. You tune in at thecigarauthority.com where you can watch us live or catch the podcast on demand at any time. Simply find us on iTunes or YouTube where you can set it and forget it on both. I want to give a shout out right now to out to uh, John Hart from Drew Estates. He just had a new baby. Oh, nice. Congratulations. congratulations. Yes. Big congratulations. Baby number two for John Hart. He was not with us at the IPCPR trade show this year because the baby was on the way knocking at the door. Yep. But finally, we have the baby and everything is and, good uh, from what I understand. I got a shout out of my own. You do? Well, as uh, many of you know, we had Sausage Fest in our Seabrook shop yesterday. Yeah, we did. Celebrating the birthday of the one and only Terry Fournier, the manager of the Seabrook location. So happy 30th birthday. It's 30. Tomorrow is his birthday. Yes. yes. Uh, so happy birthday. One day early, Terry. Um, six birthday cakes. Everybody thought that the birthday present of choice was either cake or vodka. Really? He has enough vodka to drink for the next 10 years. Cake and vodka. <laughs> I, saw, uh, I saw a picture of you and uh, 
12 inch sausage. Yes. You were about to make like this the is well, how this here's our his prom during high school. Here's um here's the thing. The queen over here. You know the yeah. expression when in Rome you do as the Romans do. When you're in Seabrook you do as the Seabrookians do. And go. so I had to fit in. This was giant sausage fest. They were big the sausage party, yeah. Big. These were the guys Huge. right from Fenway Park. They came yeah. up with the cart and the whole bit and uh nice. Sausage. Never seen this before. Uh Terry's mother on an airplane yes. to fly a banner above the store six times that yes. said "Happy Birthday, Terry." Yeah. Two guys, seriously, two yes, guys, awesome. Two guys true. cigar. Then I said to Terry, "Next time, uh, make sure that they get the S and the dot com." Huh? Yeah. <laughs> can we can we get a little marketing out of this? There we go. There's the I business know. side of it, but she was just trying to be nice. She was, but we have to turn everything into marketing and promotion of it, huh? <laughs> so. Um, this is interesting because La Florida Dominicana, I think uh, we're talking about nine, 10 million cigars that they're producing out of Miami. Now, I, I was there with them in the mid 90s when Los Libertadores came out. And that was the beginning of La Florida Dominicana. It started off as Los Libertadores. Say that later, 10 times first. Really? And then later changing the name to La Florida Dominicana. Good and choice. they were boutique, boy, man. They were small. My account number is three. I mean, I was there at the very beginning. And from what I understand, Number one and number two. Number one is not in business anymore, and number two don't doesn't carry the brand. Hmm. I am the oldest. Why can't they just they move have. your number to be number two? Because we like the number two. We do like the number two. It is my favorite number of Can all. Can we pull that off? But here is a cigar in boxes of ten that they're coming out, and this is a small brand made by the Sun, I guess. Right? Do you have information on this? Well, it's blended by Lito Gomez, but the it is. Yep. But the name in Latin means the night. And La, La Nox by La Flor Dominicana is being called limited production. I La think Tony made this. Well, it's still part of La Flor Dominicana. Yeah, but I, I think it was Tony's first cigar. Well, no, he also blended uh, Capitulo Dos. In, oh, all right. In chapter okay. one. Uh, so according to a phone We tried to have John Connie on today to tell us to make sure we understood our facts because the cigar isn't even out yet. Mm -hmm. But he's on a golf course someplace in Connecticut. So, mm -hmm. hi, John Connie. You, you make it sound like he's not working. He's working the event. He's, it's an event. It's a cigar event. But he's working. It could have been here telling us for sure. But go ahead. Sorry, Barry. So according to a phone conversation I had with John Carney, who is the vice president of sales for LFD, the company offers three types of production. Limited edition, which has a set number of product. Regular production, which is always available. And this cigar, which is limited production, in which the amount of the material dictates the amount in production. Hmm. It will be ongoing, but it will be in limited numbers. Okay. The yeah. cigar features a Brazilian Cuba wrapper over a San Andreas binder. The filler consists of a blend of estate-grown tobacco at La Flor Dominicana's La Candela Farms, as well as some Pelo de Oro, my personal favorite. It's available in one size and one size only, six and a half by 50, and Lenox will have an MSRP of $11 when it's released. If the wrapper or Brazilian Cuba sounds familiar to you, it is the same binder that is used in Davidoff Escuria. Oh, hmm. ah, okay, so Brazilian wrapper, then the San Andreas binder, right. and then we have a mixture of the Dominican mm -hmm. tobacco, including Pelo de Oro. Can we talk about how thick the wrapper is? That you can, I mean, you could cut yourself on the overlap. That is yeah. a thick wrapper. I it would, is. I would assume by looking at it that it wouldn't burn. Hmm. It's black licorice smelling. You black got the licorice, licorice stuck in your brain from maybe, parents. maybe it's there, yeah, whatever. And it, and it looks like this is a dark There's cigar. Some barnyard going on in here. Yeah, yeah. it's a dark cigar. Some cedar. It's got the uh, the quarter moon that's on it. It's yep, a different the, look completely. The, the artwork is inspired by a painting from Michelangelo. Whoa. Hmm. Okay. Right now it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting is brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other cigar brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. And uh, I have never tasted a sample of this, anything. And um, it's due soon, Barry? Um, I believe that our um, Ed over in Nashua just got notification that they might be shipping or about to ship. So they should be in stores very soon. Very soon. There's a musty quality to the pre-light taste. There is a thick wrapper, like you're saying, feel mm. on this. It is thick. It's a good draw. 
I thought it was going to be stronger, even on the dry taste yeah. than it is. So that's good news for me because I'm I'm a little scared of this one. I'm, I'm a little scared. I'm uh, a lot scared. Uh, we're yeah. going to be lighting our cigar today, boys, Paprika. with the Lotus T4. The uh, secret name to this is the Terminator. That you made up just now? Yes. Yes. Uh, it does feature the big ass patented tank that uh, Which you he see made up also. It's on, not even uh, on a lot of their products. <laughs> there is uh, four jets, and uh, it's a full metal jacket. I mean, you could somebody went to rob you, you could throw this at the back of their head and possibly oh, yeah. kill them. It, it looks like, say, the the people that are listening, it looks like uh, a giant size Zippo lighter type of look, right? right? Yeah. Do you guys know how to do the Zippo trick? I don't. I see you do it, but I don't. Can you do it on the big one? Oh, yeah. You could do some tricks with this. So you, you squeeze it between your thumb and your index and middle finger, and you just squeeze and release, and it pops open. Boom. It's very, it's very cool. The only trick I know. Yeah. I wish I could do it, but my fingers aren't big enough. They're, they're short and fat like the rest of my body. No, Dave. It's not like that. I was just thinking. I was just thinking. <laughs> we had the cigar tasting on Thursday. Oh, nothing, and nothing. the guy, we, we give out our two guys lighters, Barry. So it's got the logo of Dave mm. and his brother. Oh, and this you, guy, you're not gonna let that one go. This huh? guy comes in late with his group of eight people. They sit down at the table. His name's Tom, and Tom says, uh, "By any chance, are you the short, fat guy on the left?" Yeah. <laughs> and Dave wow. said, "Yeah." And everybody's laughing. He goes, "I, I got a mirror. I know." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they gotta go. I never met the guy before. He comes in late and he sits comes down in and late, he, calls and you a fat guy. Calls me a fat guy. Short, fat guy. Yeah. Well, whatever. not too debonair. No, no it is not. I cheated yesterday. I had one of these in my box at work, and I smoked one yesterday. Well, I'll tell you, right off the bat, it's very smooth, mm. and yeah. there's, there's no – it's not coming across as strong yet. Not yet. I'm expecting uh, – me Look looking at it, I'm I was looking I'm thinking, pleasantly surprised. This is going to be LFD strong right here. I mean, it looks like it's going to be a powerhouse, and one of the things we say all the time is you can't judge a book by its cover. Just because it's dark doesn't mean it's going to be strong. You know, like we, we tend to say that, or at least I tend to say, that the new school cigar smoker likes strong. And by new school cigar smoker, I say the guy that's big on social media, the younger 30-something guy, he tends to gravitate toward medium, medium plus, and full in my eyes. Yeah. Probably wrong. You would think that Tony Gomez, who would fit that new school mentality, oh. would make a cigar stronger than his father. Yeah, yeah. But his father's cigars are definitely stronger than this one. Well, have you ever seen Tony Gomez? He's a giant. Yes, he makes me feel short. So he is certainly not compensating for anything and uh, perhaps what? can blend a milder cigar and feel okay with it. Listen, All I know I is if we ever play basketball, I'm drafting him and Omar DeFrias oh, yeah. as my cigar basketball team. From what I understand, neither of them is very good at basketball. Omar was a pro. Right. He was a pro. <laughs> he was a professional basketball player. Yeah, I don't believe that. I've seen Absolutely, him. I've was. seen him move. I will You're going to see him, him move soon. I will school him on the basketball court after I kick his ass on I, the dance I floor. Hi, guys. This is Omar the Free is. <laughs> I am going to. I, I, I am blown away because I was so thinking that this was. I was scared. Be, <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> How am I going to talk about this and say that I can tolerate it? Is what's going so on in my far, mind? So I, good. Oh, my God. Let me ask you this. And I noticed this yesterday when, when I cheated and smoked mine. Do you notice the qualities of the San Andreas Maduro or just the San Andreas binder being prevalent on the taste profile? Yes, I taste it. Which which is which somewhat is, of dirt, dirty, um, earthy, yeah, as I earthy. would say. Which is weird that you can pick out the binder. Because very rarely can you pick out the binder more so than the wrapper. Yeah, that's hmm. interesting. What I would love to do is get a cigar like this and have all of the components rolled into individual cigars and be able to see where that's you, you've gone through that before coming. yeah, right? yeah, with Davidoff. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, beautiful white ash dark dark wrapper with a white white ash looks beautiful mm. with the white contrast this is this is one to really look at is it coming in boxes of 10 boxes of 10 and it's a round box so they are very retailer unfriendly unfriendly because these things are Huge. They're not going to be un look huge. Yeah, they're not going to be unfriendly when people buy them by the box. Right. They're ten. It's not two rows of five. It's one row of ten, 
with a circular circumference around it because it's a round box. See, I would argue that it's genius because there's no way we can fit it in our singles case. It's going to have to be out on display all the time. Which will be you know, featured, basically, right. because it's out there. This is the time of year most retailers are having a hard time because we're taking a new product. It's pouring in at this point. Somebody came in the other day and said, what do you got new? And they, um, one of our employees, Tim, walked the guy around for about 20 minutes showing him all the new <laughs> things that are pouring in. Right. And uh, they're all out. Each night we put them back in the humor and stuff. They're out because we can't find space for them, and now we have to get rid of the brands we want to get rid of. Right. And we have to actually work and figure out, okay, what's at the bottom of the sales thing? The only way to, to get the space, though, is to sell the product that doesn't sell, and this takes a long time. It does. Right? So we're in that in-between state right now. But you're probably going to your local brick-and-mortar store, and you're going to see all these new things. Now's the time. If you're looking for the, the best time of year to try new cigars, this is the time. It's all pouring in right now, so uh, pop in there and see. So uh, I forgot about this classic day in classic history while we were talking, so uh, let's Before get to Before you it. hit yep. that button, me and Chuck are going to play this under protest because it was witnessed before that somebody was looking up birthdays on the computer. Yep. This week. Yep. This week. Like uh, before the show. Here's my question, boys. Do you know where he gets his information? You do. You know where he gets his information. Where? So if you're going to play well, the I'm game. Not, I'm not going to look it up. And if you're going to play the game. And memorize birthdays. You should just do a little research. That's well, all I'm saying. You've heard of epic rap battles. <laughs> but now it's time for the epic battle. Wow. It's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. Tell anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In classic history. It is looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under $3 per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where that came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including the Classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste. The classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown, and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at TwoGuysCigars.com. That's TwoGuysCigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. Okay, so Mr. Jonathan could look up all the birthdays he wants. I only have three questions today, and one of them he may have considered that I was going to do it, but the other two, there's no way. It okay. doesn't matter what he, what, he, what he looked up in advance. doesn't matter. <clears throat> all right, the first one, who was the winner last week? Jonathan. Jonathan. Okay, Jonathan, I'm going to have you go first. This is the one you may be able to figure out that I would use. Today's the birth date of Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, movie actor, renowned method actor who won over his audience in The Graduate, Marathon Man, Tootsie, Kramer versus Kramer, Rain Man, All the President's Men, Wag the Dog. It's his birthday today, Dustin Hoffman. What year? I'm going to go with 1958. 58. I'm going to go with 1953. Oh, I'm way off then. I got 1942, Dave. 1942. You're all over. You're Whoa. all over. 1937. Wow. So he looks great. Let Mr. Jonathan do all the uh, looking he wants. You know I would. Which do. I was really just reinstalling my database on iTunes, Chuck. But well, you were on IMDb, so. So I don't know what that means. Here we go. Uh -huh. Maybe. <laughs> Barry Stein, what are you doing on your phone? <laughs> I am pimping the Flor Dominicana's Lanox that we are smoking live on the show via Instagram. Today is the birth date of Donnie Most. Donnie Most. Uh, Potter's family. No. Best known for his Happy role. Days. Happy Days. as the class count Ralph Mouth on a television show, Happy Days. Sunday, Monday. There we go. Days. Besides Happy Days, he's also featured on Ed TV and The Love Boat, recently in Glee and Family Guy. Johnny Most. Rose from the Grave and, and Family Guy. You ever see that, that uh, episode? I'm no. a big Family Guy guy. Johnny Most. Dave, who was the guy that did the play-by-play -play for the Celtics back in the 80s? He had the voice like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Johnny, um, who is it? Somebody's yelling at yeah. it. It almost sounds like Johnny Most. Okay. That's what I thought. It is Johnny Most. This it is, is, isn't it? It is. This is Donnie Most. Okay, okay. Donnie Most. 
Um, now that we got that cleared up, can we continue <laughs> playing the game? Yeah. Anyway, he was born today. What year, Barry Stein? 1949. 1949. 1930. 1930. 1939. 1939. 1939. We'll take it. 1953. And that, that, that was my original thing, and then I always deduct two. But this time I decided to deduct four. But I had it on the nose. So it is one to zero to zero. We have only one question left. Chuck Morrison, this I'm is ready. for you. I I'm think, ready. I think you worked with this person before. Rena Greek. Rena Greek. Rena Greek. Nothing, buddy. A.K.A. Rena Le Lesna, or her stage name, Sable. Oh. oh. Steve Austin's wife, right? Yeah, wrestling. She's a former WWE diva whose career spanned from 1996 to 2004. She appeared on the cover of Playboy magazine three times, and in the film Corky Romano, she married Brock Lesnar in 2006. She is Sable, born today. What year? Put me down for 1974. 1974. 72. 72. 66. 66. We'll take the point. Ugh. Because it's 67, and Barry Stein wins two to nothing to nothing. Study all you want. You don't know what I'm going to pick. <clears throat> study all you want. I wasn't studying, I recommend but if, it. I, if I was, I would have picked up on Sable. Really? Okay. Hey, you're a wrestling guy. You're a wrestling guy. <laughs> okay, so uh, you want to get into this, huh? All right. You want to go deeper into this mailbag? I don't know how this came across my desk, but it was not on the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. It was a comment on Dave's editorial. Okay, so... Now you've got me confused as how it starts. You mentioned that one criteria for a boutique cigar is the sales of a particular brand, all sizes included, should not exceed more than $1 million a year. I'm yeah. just curious. Of the most popular brands you sell, how many <coughs> of those brands do you think sell in a year? All of them are over a million of all popular brands. How many retailers carry that cigar? Hundreds. Maybe thousands, thousands, I'd say. I'm trying to understand why one million is the benchmark. Why not five hundred thousand or two know. million? Well, everything is relative. Yeah, I think it's because you take the size of the industry, which isn't very big. Yeah, three hundred million altogether. Right. Yep. And then you figure out if you're one three hundredth of that, mm -hmm. then you're not you're not a boutique anymore. Um, should distribution play a part in this? If a boutique cigar can somehow get a few boxes into hundreds of retail shops. Uh, they won't be boutique for very long. However, yes, yes, if they a, will. If, if a million is the criteria, and you got a few boxes in hundreds, let's call it five hundred, you got fifteen hundred boxes times twenty-five. You're still way under the million dollar mark. Um, yep. However, if a boutique has very limited distribution and gets into maybe forty or fifty shops, it may not generate as much excitement and demand and re remain a boutique. I also believe that a boutique brand should also be sold by a small company it's okay if they use larger manufacturing to do their in quotes private labeling uh, but the guys in charge should be the small company their blend their choices of tobacco etc mm. so if i were to bullet this list my criteria for books teak cigar would be sales volume distribution company size i could be totally off the mark no and not know what the hell i'm talking about hey i'm on my lunch hour thought I'd keep my fingers busy because I'm on a diet, and if I'm typing, I'm not eating. Uh, You're not a professional because <laughs> I can eat and type at the same time, and I do while I write because <laughs> I feel I write better while I'm eating. So his question is, what do you think? Is there an easy way to point at something and say that is a boutique cigar? That is the reason for this whole editorial because there isn't an easy way, and I'd like to make it. Somebody needs to write it and say Let's this is it. the criteria of what I tried to do it, but. Yeah, because Dave, I mean, if you think about it, right? All you did was theorize. Yeah. Well, go back to our five-year anniversary show where we had on Nick Perdomo. Yeah. And here's where I'm going with this. So Nick was telling us when he first started Perdomo Cigars, they were he was literally as a one-man team, one-man business, going yep. door to door, building up this brand in the garage with his wife. Right. Yeah. So if that ain't boutique, right. I mean, come on, right? So my point is, but he became successful. Right. So every company when they first start out is technically boutique. Yeah. So we, de we need benchmarks. We need a threshold. So once they meet a certain criteria, as you're trying to establish, that defines whether or not they're petite or no longer petite. Because at one point, my theory is, every company was once boutique. And now when it reaches boutique, you as the beer guy, once it, it isn't craft anymore, now you're not interested in it and sales will drop because all the people that are into it because it's boutique drop out of it. 
Right. You know, I'm sure a lot of people dropped out of Sam Adams once they became mainstream. That's right. In, I would in, disagree because Sam they Adams sell is more, huge. Right. Well, right. They, right. Sell. Well, they opened up to other areas in the market where the the guy who doesn't follow boutique uh, brands which is now all of a sudden 99 percent of beer drinkers okay. don't follow it okay so now when that 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 particular beer becomes marketed around the country it is now opened up to other people and now they're seen in every supermarket they're seen in every beer distributor they're seen it almost every bar so now they know it and they're going to drink it so that's going to increase the volume but they're going to lose the original customer. Who cares? Drank it. They lost 1%. They get 99%. But my point is that I forgot what my point was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's priceless. So at the point that that's you have. That's what we love about you. <laughs> you have no point. That's part of his charm, folks. He has no point. <laughs> so. One thought is once <laughs> he's on vacation. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, like I mean, like Macanudo. Everybody knows the brand Macanudo, yeah. so people are going to gravitate it because it's a name they know. A boutique guy isn't going to gravitate it because he knows it's too big for his tastes. Same thing with Sam Adams; it became too big for their taste. It's no longer mom and pop. How about when they have their their um, winter one comes out or something? Yeah, that's a good Sam point. Sam right Adams there. is Sam at, Sam ultra Sama comes consistent out. and always has been, and that's how Sam they. Sam Adams is brewed share. out of Pennsylvania. They're not even brewed out of Boston. Like they have that brewery in Boston, but that's only there for that actual like tour. Yeah, and then yeah. a couple bars locally in the Dorchester JP area. So their distribution's coming out of PA, but they're advertised and branded as a Boston lager. It's BS, right? Hey, I resent those initials. Once, yeah. <laughs> once you, you resemble hit, them. Yeah. Once you hit the point of you've got mass market appeal, so you've got big companies like Davidoff, General, Alt Altadis, even Perdomo, Fuente. LFD, Fuente. You hit mass market appeal. You re become a household name. Would that that would I would think that would disqualify you from? Boutiqueness. That's the point I was getting at. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> there valid. needs to be a number on that, and yeah. I think a million to a million units is an acceptable it number. Is a fair number. It's a good number. Once you hit the million mark, you now should have enough uh, money coming in to be able to secure tobacco mm -hmm. to keep the consistency, and that's what's going to get market share down down the road. It was the only thing of the of what I wrote that I was consistent on. Uh, it was drawing that million mark and then that guy that writes in there says, "Well, how did you arbitrarily pick that number? Why not 500,000?" I arbitrarily picked it. <laughs> yes, I did, but I, I you know, with with some intelligence in mind, knowing what some of the manufacturers make. Mm -hmm. Um but, you know, I don't know. Now, being sold in being a private label for a cigar shop really should keep your boutique street cred well you become at that point ultra boutique what the hell now does that even now, mean? Now, now what creates ultra boutique yeah we don't need to add to this mess but no. i think a store specific cigar is ultra boutique yeah that's boutique anyway what we need to be is more gentleman like while we're doing this stuff and finding life till its fullest and it's important to be debonair and how to be more debonair is gentleman chuck morrison do you need a gentleman <laughs> gentleman Gentlemen, you need a gentleman. <laughs> you wouldn't want to call me gentleman. Ladies, fasten your seatbelts, switch on your electronic devices, and pop up the loud. You need a gentleman, Charles. May I interrupt? Go for it. All right. So I had forwarded you this email from Sean Rogers that I want to read, which is what where you got your inspiration for the gentleman's yes, way. Yes. Yes. This message was submitted through the contact us page. By my good friend Sean. He shops here in the Salem store. Hey guys, since I'm new to the Cigar Authority show, I've been working my way backwards watching your shows, and I like the debonair segment. Thank you, Sean. But I was just wondering, can you do a how to be debonair on a budget piece? After spending my hard-earned money on cigars, it is tough to be debonair. Thanks, signed Sean. So this is where you got your inspiration. Yes, and, it is. And go. Thank you, Sean. This is the gentleman's way. It's brought to you by Debonair Cigars and Rum. Debonair Cigars provide its clients with, wait for it, suspension of reality. Time spent smoking a debonair can never be subtracted from one's life. Sean, thinking with you in mind, here's the gentleman's way to be debonair on a budget. Being a gentleman is a state of mind, not a state of wallet. There are plenty of people from the very rich 
to the living paycheck to paycheck that are not very debonair. Here are a couple ways to be a gentleman without having to spend a lot of money. First up is looks. Key topic here is to match your leathers. Brown shoes, brown belt. Black shoes, black belt. It's simple, inexpensive, and Sean, for 19 bucks, you can go to Kmart and get yourself a stylish belt that is reversible to match both the black and the brown. Next up here, guys, behavior. Go out of your way to open the door for people. This means from the outside of the building, you open the door remaining on the outside and wait for the person to walk in before you. If you're exiting the building, you must, key here, must exit first and hold the door for the person as they exit. Last up here, the gentleman way to act debonair on a budget is through your manners. Please thank you in the most often overlooked, you're welcome, are all debonair and guys, all free of charge. That's the debonair way. It's brought to you by Debonair Cigars and Rum. The question always is, Sean, are you debonair enough? Thank you, Chuck. You're welcome, Dave. Nice, <laughs> nice and short that time. That was good. Uh, next Saturday, uh, we will uh, be hosting the show from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Nashua, New Hampshire. Brace yourself for a bold sensory experience. Camacho American Barrel Age Tour will be there on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday will be the finale along with the Cigar Authority. So it's going to be very interesting. This is an event. Not to be missed either. I'm cutting my vacation a day short just to be there to take part because it is so Started your vacation awesome. yesterday. It's not a day short. Vacation is from Sunday to Saturday. Right. Technically, so you know. my vacation starts tomorrow. Technically. Okay. So I'm doing but, Sunday to Friday. I think you're already in the mood. You're in the yeah, you're in you've, the, you've flown. The chickens have flown the coop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First time in five years. But this is an event not to be missed. Yes. Uh, looking forward to it. We're going to try to ring the bell. You know, when you slam the thing down on the bell and you ring the bell? Close, but no cigar. That's where that comes from. What's the thing they throw the, the thing in the cornhole? Cornhole. I don't oh. like the name of it, but cornhole. <laughs> I, hear, I hear Jonathan's really good at cornhole. Yes. Bags. Yeah, it's Call a different, bags. Different, different game. Different oh, game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's going to be a good time, and um, they're going to have barbecued foods and all kinds of different stuff, right? And Barry's doing the photography. And the grilling. And the grilling. And the grilling. And the grilling. He's going to be doing one of those things. I'm not even looking. There we go. Right now, it's time to take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away. Ha-ha. They're coming to take me away. Ho-ho. Hee-hee. Ha-ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away. It's time for news from the Insane Asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars Take No Prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80. That's Asylum. Ron Walker is a test jumper for Army parachutes and as such routinely jumps out of airplanes. On one of his test jumps, his phone slipped out of his pocket and fell to the ground. On a whim, Ron activated the, quote, Find My iPhone app, and to his surprise, it was transmitting a signal. Using one of the Army's ATVs, he found his iPhone virtually unscathed after falling over 1,000 feet and hitting a terminal velocity of over 130 knots. I have no idea what a knot is. That's insane. And you may have found your Samsung, but definitely not the battery. That's Asylum. They're coming to take me away. Ha -ha. They're coming to take me away. Ho ho hee hee. Ha -ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away. Ha -ha. And there we go. What are our thoughts on La Flor Dominicana Lenox? Home run. Man, I'll tell you, I was afraid at first. Yeah. I'm going to say that it has crept up into medium, but not much more than that. I'd say medium plus, only because we, we, we're basing it down a little bit because we expect it to be so full-bodied. Okay. And it probably is a little more than medium, um, but it is not anywhere near what 
some of these fuller body the fluid Dominicanas. And I say that as, in a positive note personally. Right. Mm -hmm. I would say it's one of my favorite the fluid Dominicanas of all time. That's how good it is. I'd put this on par with their Suave line, the Maduro in the Suave line. It's around that that medium, depending on your palate, medium plus uh, in the strength. Lots of great flavors. There's some sweetness coming off of the wrapper. Mm. And as Barry astutely pointed out, you've got a little earthy note to the binder. Very, very interesting. And I'll add this, but 130 knots is, by the way, 149 and a half miles per hour. So not to slightly less than miles per hour. It's the nautical equivalent of land speed. Okay. So, but my thoughts on this is it's very different than a La Florida Dominicana, which is also helped out by the different band. So it's going to stand on the shelf differently than a La Florida. Sure is. I think somebody who's been a little bit scared to try La Florida because it's been a little bit outside their warehouse in terms of strength, this would be a good cigar to introduce them to La Florida Dominicana. Now, I haven't relit the cigar at all. Mm -hmm. It stayed lit this whole time, mm -hmm. and I've been doing a lot of talk, and we all have, and I'm looking at everybody's cigar. We're a quarter of the way down in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. This thing is slow could smoke. Be, it, a Toro. It could go. Is this a Toro size? Or this is one size, one six size. and a half by 50, right. slightly larger than a Toro, which would be six yeah. by 50 or six by 52. You're going to get close to a two hour smoke out of this thing. It's more like a Robusto, Robusto extra. Could yeah, this yeah. be La Florida Dominicana realizing that the market share that they hold is really those fuller bodied guys? And that, and that they will only swap the same customer in between. And that now that now they're going to tone it down a little bit to try to get a little market share in that medium category. Yes, this is a different customer. There's, there's very few mild cigars as flavorful and as complex as their Suave line in the yeah. natural. Yeah. I love that cigar. Yep. Outside of the Byron Distinguido of all the new cigars I've smoked that were released at IPCPR, Outside of that one cigar so far, this is my favorite. It's which, very good. Uh, would, would you give that a 99? 99. Wow. See, I disagree with you completely. Mm -hmm. I would give that 110. <laughs> I smoked that at the trade show. It was the only time I ever smoked that cigar. And I was so busy with customers, I couldn't pay attention. So uh, I really didn't get to really smoke it. But I, it, the here, and I want to start uh, smoking that. Right now, let's go to break. When we come back, good news and bad news in the cigar industry. We got it all. Mr. J has the recluse tweets of the week. Uh, he says they're good. Again, we'll be the judge of that. Old Fart Freddy and lots more when we return. We're live from Two Guys Smoke Shop, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Radio Network. <laughs> Savor this moment, the sparks of conversation, the anticipation of that first draw. Savor the story shared over a cigar like this, a cigar that makes this moment classic. Diavo Classic. Savor a composition of handcrafted Dominican leaf, graced with notes of 25-year-old tobacco. Richly complex, yet remarkably smooth. Savor a harmony of creamy, balanced flavors. A duet of two cigar virtuosos, jazz and cigar legend Avo Uvesian and master blender Hendrik Kellner. A cigar meant to be shared with friends old and new. The Avo Classic. Savor every note. Visit your local tobacconist or see the complete AVO line at avo.com. I'd like to file a missing persons report. I've lost my one true love. All right. What does she look like? She is like no other. Her skin, dark, simply gorgeous. Not slender, but firm to the touch. Well, we'll do everything we can for you, sir. The night we met over a fine scotch, it was love at first sight. Details. I need details, sir. Well, she's about five and a half inches tall. You mean five feet tall? No, inches. Oh, she's a mid, a dwarf, uh, a little person. No, she's a cigar. Ah, right, sir. Is she a Fleur de Lorraine cigar? The cigar that men around the world are falling in love with? Yes. Oh, I've seen this before. Louie! Yeah? Uh, get him a Fleur de Lorraine cigar and a list of United Cigar retailers to carry it. Fleur de Lorraine Cigars, simply gorgeous. Available only at appointed United Cigar retailers across the country. Fleur de Lorraine, stop missing out. Mr. John, 
a shadowed figure spinning tunes on records that do not exist. Mr. John, a young cigar smoker on a crusade to champion the oldies, top 40, and yes, even country with a host of DJs that operate above the mix. Mr. Jonathan is my dance instructor. Mr. Jonathan is my DJ. Mr. Jonathan is me. Mr. Jonathan is my DJ.com, your one stop shop for everything DJ and sound production. Mr. Jonathan is my DJ.com. He reads the dictionary just for fun. He finds the minutia of tax preparation enthralling. Years ago, at an open mic night, he was paid just to leave. He is the only man to win a staring contest with the Statue of Liberty. He is so uninteresting to women, he was forced to open a cigar shop to sell to men. He's not even a legend in his own mind. He finds himself boring. His family barely pays attention to him, and his mother refers to him as, Hey you, he is David Garofalo, the least interesting man in the cigar world. Not since Zeno Davidoff has a cigar retailer had a brand named after him. The man himself may be a bore, but the cigar isn't. Garofalo is a premium handmade luxury cigar using U.S. shade wrapper and a blend of Nicaraguan fillers and binder. Complex and very interesting. Garofalo may be the most interesting cigar in the world. It once won a longest ash contest without even being lit. You don't light a Garofalo, it lights you. Its flavor expands on your palate faster than the universe. It has been said that this cigar would be phenomenal as a Maduro, except it's perfect as it is. I always smoke cigars, and when I do, I prefer Garofalo. Keep smoking Garofalo, my friends. Hey, Jack, I finally found a cigar magazine that I like. Really? What's it called? Cigar Journal. What's so great about Cigar Journal? Is it really different from the other magazines? It is. Cigar Journal is all about cigars. None of the nonsense you see in other magazines. Really? Yeah, it has stories, reviews, and the latest news about premium cigars. Is it a little newsletter? No, I think you'll be very impressed. Cigar Journal has beautiful images, a thick cover, and is strictly for the cigar enthusiast. They cover cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. That sounds interesting. Where can I buy it? Cigar Journal is available at local cigar retailers and on the web at www.cigarjournal.co. That's cigarjournal.co. I'll sign up today. This is Mr. Jonathan Carney with La Florida Minicana Cigars, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority of the United Cigar Retailers Radio Network. <laughs> It's not Mr. It's anything. anything. It's not Mr. Anything. We're back live from the La Florida Dominicana Cigar Studios. We got cigar news, good and bad. Also, Old Fat Freddy, new trademarks of cigars coming out, and they're, they're still coming out with uh, new cigars, uh, despite what the FDA is about to do. But uh, we'll see what happens when that happens. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. New cigars hitting the shelves and trademarks. Barry Stein, what do you got? All right, it's a lengthy one this week. Yeah. Each week we share the newest cigars to arrive at twoguyscigars.com as well as all Two Guys Smoke Shop locations. Tis the season. Well, with the exception of one for all Two Guys Smoke Shop locations. And this week the additions are Trademark Maduro, which comes from us from Hammer and Sickle. Trademark is a cigar that used to be known as Icon and is made at the Tabadon factory in the Dominican Republic, which is the same factory to produce Davidoff. Breathe, buddy. Breathe. Yes. Fratello Bianco, from our friend Omar de Fries, who will be on the show in a few weeks, has seen his new cigar land, and they feature a San Andreas Negro Maduro wrapper. La Imperioso has arrived, and this one comes from Crown Heads and features the same blend from the inaugural Las Calaveras, which was released in 2014. According to John Huber, the demand for the cigar was so high that they decided to release it as a regular blend. The El Centurion H2K CT, which features a brand new strain of wrapper a habano 2000 grown in the connecticut river valley for the first time and we saw some of that wrapper last week when we yeah. were at the farms yep. the ogre lancero which is available online only and while asylum is known for their large ring gauge cigars this one comes in at a minuscule 7 by 38 byron from selected tobacco has seen the release of their new size measuring 6 by 55 
It's called the Distinguidos, and it's available in three packs, 10 count boxes, and singles. And incidentally, and on just that, by the way, rated 99 on the cigar authority.com. 2,800 sticks. That's it. Is that boutique? Yes. 2,800 sticks total. And Minus the three that we smoked while we were at the trade yeah, show. Is that this year? Is that That's forever? Forever. I doubt it. You got to find that information out, but can't get a hold of the owner right now. Well, in my conversation with Nelson, he said that when he when he does his aging of the tobacco, some tobaccos age darker, and when he selects the leaves and all that, that this particular shade is the one that ends up being the least amount, and so twenty eight hundred. Right, shut up. And lastly, but certainly not least, Kilo. The cigar blended by yours truly and distributed by United Cigar is now available. I describe it as sweet with a serious kick, and the cigar has gotten so far tremendous feedback on groups like Cigar Cartel, and it's available at all three Two Guys Smoke Shop locations as well as shops around the nation. So have you is, – is everybody being kind, or has is, is anybody uh, said negative things? So far, I have not gotten one negative piece yeah. of feedback. All right. So I don't know if they're being debonair, right? Uh, but so far, nobody has tried to kick me. I wonder if we dare um, give it blind to some people. Maybe the blind man's puff or something like that. Yeah, I, I can definitely send them. Yeah, some. yeah. You don't think that they'll have any idea what it is that you're sending it? Well, the people no. The guy at Blind Man's strong. Puff gets them, removes the bands, puts a paper band around them, and then he sends it to four reviewers. Gotcha. He has about 10 or 12 reviewers, and he sends them all the cigars without the bands. And then they put together a Google spreadsheet. And Because I, I would always want, and, and I say it to the people that work for me, I'm working on a blend and, and putting something out. Please don't pat me in the back and say this is it and stuff. Tell me the truth. I want to know the, the absolute truth. I have not sunk all my money into it yet. I haven't done anything. I'm at this stage or whatever. Right. We, we, are, we are way past that stage at that point. This thing is reality at this at now, but you want the truth, right? You, sometimes it hurts, but the truth, I'm going to tell you, uh, very good cigar. I think the guy, I've never uh, carried a brand from, um, what is his name again? Um, the, the Rojas. Blends, Rojas. Mm -hmm. Everything I try to him is very good. We don't carry any of it, but uh, very good. I think he has the potential of being the next big thing, uh, yeah. but I'm friends with the guy, so yeah. put that asterisk. The following trademark applications for registration were submitted this week under tobacco products, and Courtney Smith, formerly of La Polina, is filed for orphan bail. Quality Importers is filed for blood. Padilla files for La Pilar. The Castro Brothers, uh, they file for C. Knight and Lord Calvert. Uh, Max Raw, the parent company of Altatis, files for Always True. Fumari International, the parent company of Illusioni, has filed for Old Reno. And lastly, Conspiracy Incorporated, the parent company of Room 101, has filed for Johnny Tobacconart and Breakfast in Portugal. Breakfast in Portugal. That I did not <coughs> see at the show, <clears throat> but uh, all very uh, interesting. Interesting, to say the least. Okay, right now it's time to go into the aging room with our friend Old Fat Freddy. It's time to step into the aging room. Sometimes aging makes a great cigar even better, just like aging room cigars. They're made in small batches from rare and limited 100% Dominican tobaccos. And here in our aging room is Old Fart Freddy. Nowadays, restaurants are afraid to make their food spicy for fear someone will slap them with a frivolous lawsuit. In my day, restaurateurs were proud to bring on the pain, like my three friends, all named Guy, who had a habanero almond challenge. The challenge was, eat one pound of their slow-roasted habanero almonds in five minutes without any water. They were so hot, most people quit after the first handful. Nowadays, you can buy pre-cut meat chunks with the bones removed. In my day, the butcher only cut the meat into large body parts, and you bone the rest yourself. Nowadays, there is an epidemic. Everyone is afraid of clowns. In my day, every neighborhood had a clown. Oz was named Bobo. Bobo was awesome. He made balloon animals, juggled, and when we used our manners, would let us honk his nose. There's we were Bobo honking, meat boning men with some guy's hot nuts in their mouth. Sometimes, yeah, aging going. makes a great cigar even better. Just like aging room cigars. Made in small batches from rare and limited 100% Dominican tobacco. Try aging room cigars from boutique blends. Some things are better aged. Some are not. Oh, man, I should have washed my hands after handling those nuts. Now mine are on fire. 
I, I can see where it goes. I wonder if everybody <laughs> tries to connect the dots and go <laughs> listening to it and say, all right, I see with hot nuts in his mouth, and here it goes. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, bad news, Barry. Give it to us. All right, in a sneaky move, uh, Colton County, South Carolina, held a special unannounced session uh, that was held by the county council this week where they voted to pass a ban on public smoking within the county. As reported a few weeks ago, the city of Philadelphia announced a ban of smoking in housing projects, and that ban is now in effect, making them the largest housing authority in the country to ban smoking. Mm -hmm. The city of Griswold, Connecticut, is voting on Tuesday whether or not to ban smoking in parks. The city of Ketchikan, Alaska proposed a city tax on other tobacco products such as cigars that would be 75% of the wholesale price. If passed, this tax on top of the state tax would equal 150% tax on cigars. The capital of New Jersey, Trenton, has banned smoking in parks. And Geneva, New York, which is located in the Finger Lakes, Finger Lakes region, has voted to ban smoking in all housing authority properties beginning on October 1st. However, residents won't face eviction for breaking the rules until April 1st, 2016. And yesterday, Geneva, New York, also banned smoking in parks. All bad. Give me something good. All right. Something. The good news this week. The owner of Brennan's Smoke Shop in Massachusetts is looking to repeal the state's 40% tobacco tax via a pair of petitions entitled The Act to Eliminate Double Taxation on the Sale of Tobacco Products. The petitions now go before the Attorney General to see if they meet the requirements of the state's constitution. If approved, they will need a minimum of 64... 64,750 signatures. There was a space. I got all confused. 64,750 <laughs> signatures for them to go to the legislature. That's insane. Oh, that's the wrong section. Yeah. Um, Double taxation. Yes, and, and they, they pulled it off with liquor. Um, so they can certainly pull it off with this. So there's precedent. So 64,000 uh, go to your retailers in Massachusetts. I hope that they all have the petitions there for you to sign. And if they don't, if you're a retailer in Massachusetts, call the Brennan say, get me a copy of it and help that out yeah. because there needs to be unity. You guys have to fight together. I was in Massachusetts. I fought by myself and failed. There has to be everybody getting together. Don't let this poor guy do it by himself because he'll fail. He needs your help. You have to live in Massachusetts to be able to sign it or outside it. It's interesting that this hasn't been done before. Double right. taxation. Right. It has with liquor, and you can't tax it twice. So, so it's constantly he, he'll win if he ends up doing this. They're gonna hate him, but is it? It's gonna win. Is it that because the state has a sales tax? That's yes. tax number one. And it's compounded, and you can't tax something and then tax it right. again. Double taxation. We threw um, tea See? in the ocean for that, right? Double taxation without representation. I think it was just taxation. <laughs> yeah, it was double taxation is what what, what it was, and that's exactly what they're doing there. So uh, good for them uh, trying to pull it off. And my fingers are crossed. Uh, we got to count on you, um, 64,000 people. Very hard to do because we don't have 64,000 cigar smokers in there. But it doesn't matter if you're a cigar smoker or not. Right. It's wrong. Sign the petition because it's, it, it's wrong what they're doing. Yeah, would you like them to double tax your soda? They don't tax it to begin with. So, but would you like it? I wouldn't like it. You I would like, like them it. to double tax anything. I don't like the first tax. <laughs> I don't. I don't well, like that's it. the benefit of playing offense. All right, it's time for us to take a peek into our social media segment brought to you by Recluse Cigars. And it's my turn. It's time for social media segment brought to you by Recluse Cigars, the cigars that were built on social media. All Recluse Cigars go through eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years to guarantee you balanced flavor. Try a Recluse Cigar today. And these are the best tweets I saw all week. Lost Unicorn. If found... Please stop using drugs. Drinking rum before 10 a.m. makes you a pirate, not an alcoholic. I've got 99 problems, and duct tape fixes the vast majority of them. Not bad. Want to freak out your neighbors? Name your Wi-Fi FBI surveillance van number seven. I actually do that. <laughs> and the best tweet I saw all week, when Roger was asked if there's any advantage to living in Switzerland, he replied, well, the flag is a big plus. 
Why? Wait for it. The flag what? is actually it's blue a and yellow. Plus. The yellow's in the shape of a plus. Oh. Today's social media was brought to you by Recluse Cigars, and the explanations were brought to you by Barry Stein. <laughs> <laughs> Rolled N2 bar, the old Cuban way, for an effortless and perfect draw. Every, Every time. time. Recluse Cigars. And, I would and like it, to uh, suggest that the drum roll, some of them get crickets instead of the cha-ching. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, when you are um, up there and okay. doing your thing, you know what to do. There you go. We'll have to move them on the same hey, page. Hey, listen, <laughs> if you don't like how I'm doing with the recluse, you can always take it over. There we go. So looking ahead, next week is going to be a big week for the Cigar Authority because it's a three-day Camacho event, uh, the big bold event that's going to happen at Two Guys Smoke Shop in Nashville, New Hampshire. It's going to happen Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They call the grand finale on Saturday where there's going to be the barbecue and everything. The other days there's lots going on, but I don't believe the barbecue and the, the drinking and the things. So Saturday is the key day, but you know what? Come by Thursday and Friday, see what it's all about, and you can really gear up for what's going to happen on Saturday. This is a major event. This is not a uh, going into yeah, the store and meeting right. a guy or something. This is how they do it. This is, this is the way to have, um, do it. It's the way to roll out a product for sure. The following week, we have uh, Bobby Newman, coming, uh, Eric Newman, actually, from J.C. Newman coming in, and uh, he's going to do a few days with us. But on Saturday, we're going to be broadcasting from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, and their event is the Too Good to Be True event, yeah. um, and we can't tell you what it is. That's an in-store, the only thing. Is uh, that explains why I've been asking for information to help promote it. And, and we leaving you out of I'm it? leaving me out of the loop. <laughs> or it could just be because you went on vacation and they wanted to respect that. No, it's it's, no. A, it's a too good to be true uh, promotion that's happening, and it's very, very interesting. Uh, and we'll see how, uh, how it plays out. So looking forward to that. What is our thoughts on the La Fleur Dominicana Lenox? Got a little stronger. I'm going to put it at a solid medium plus at this point. I'm halfway through. Yeah, it started off medium. <clears throat> There's a little lemon rind going on. I don't know about that paprika thing you were well, talking about. Well, I got that only on the, the cold drawer. I never got it once the cigar was lit. A little but lemon zest. I definitely zest. get the uh, lemon zest. A little 100%. sweetness. Maybe yeah. maybe, maybe even a little honey. If well, you from the hive. The sweetness is from the Pella de Oro. It's from the honey. I would swear that this was a Nicaraguan cigar. Yes. Mm. I would sweet, you know, it has the taste of Nicaraguan tobacco, and there is no Nicaraguan tobacco in it. No, nope. but they they managed to beef up their flavor components. Yeah. that happens here. Um, black pepper is happening, which you, you'd normally see in Nicaraguan tobacco. Uh, I do see that lemon rind thing that you say in here. Uh, maybe a a, a a strong roast coffee. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> very very nice. Uh, I can do it. This is not a problem for me. This is a go-to La Flor Dominicana for me yep. and worthy of you guys trying the cigar. But I would buy a box of 10. I mean, they're cool looking. To, to, and price, to, do we have a price on this yet? 11 bucks. 11, 11 bucks. bucks. Yeah. Yep. Very nice. Very, very nice. One size. i got to read this mailbag real quick. It's very short. Uh, submitted through the Contact Us page. Hey, guys. Alex here. Recently found you guys' show and been blowing through your episodes. Easy, Mr. Jonathan. Not like that. <laughs> Anyways, really enjoy the shows. Keep up the great work. I just had to I had to share that with you. He meant you, you in a negative way. Exactly. And you liked it. And I liked and it. And you liked it. Bring Next it week, rain or shine, I urge you to join us Thursday, Friday, but mostly on Saturday at Two Guys Smoke Shop in Nashua, New Hampshire. Cornhole, Jenga, Strongest Man, um, Giant cigars. Giant Jenga, right? Giant Jenga, uh, Cigars. Food, booze. It's the Camacho Barrel Age Tour. Take a ride and join us no matter where you are. Take a ride up. It'll be worth it, I promise you. Uh, nobody does an event like Camacho does it. They did awesome. it last year. It was unbelievable. They said, wait till you see what happens this year. I'm excited for it myself, and that doesn't happen often. So we'll be live at Two Guys Smoke Shop in Nashua, New Hampshire next year. In the meantime, Thank you for listening this week and every week. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Radio Network. And when you're smoking your LFD Lanox, always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. We'll see you guys right here next week on the United Cigar Radio Network. Take a trip into another world. CAO Colombia. The newest addition to CAO's World Blends is a delicious addition to the CAO collection. 
It's the first cigar to prominently feature Colombian tobacco and is a mild to medium bodied blend boasting notes of toasted nuts sprinkled with briny nuances. Using a tobacco from the isolated mountainous region of Colombia, the Aiku Mazinga tobacco is a unique and rare find that provides a smoking experience you won't forget. For a savory smoke that takes you to another world, visit CAO Colombia. This is Pat Whitley. Can I have your attention for a second? I want to tell you about a fellow named Dave and the fact that I have been buying my cigars from him since 1985 when they first opened up. Two Guys Smoke Shop. Now, Two Guys Smoke Shop have three convenient locations right over the Massachusetts border in tax-free New Hampshire. Now, here's something I bet you didn't know. Two Guys Smoke Shop is America's largest cigar shop and has the largest inventory of cigars anywhere. Wait till you see this place. You're not going to believe it, all right? Now, if you like cigars, you can't find a better place to buy them than at Two Guys Smoke Shop. They're in Salem, New Hampshire, Seabrook, New Hampshire, and their new location in tax-free Nashua, New Hampshire. It is worth the ride. You can call 888-2-CIGAR-2. That's 888-2-CIGAR-2 or on the web at twoguyssmokeshop.com. The best place to buy cigars anywhere is Two Guys Smoke Shop. It's Stogie Heaven. With a million choices, Stogie Heaven. 